A very warm welcome to all our viewers. I'm Anjali from Simply Learn and today I'll be taking you through a tutorial on Ansible. So Ansible is currently the most trending and popular configuration management tool and it's used mostly under the DevOps approach. So what will you be learning today? You'll learn why you should use Ansible, what exactly is Ansible, the Ansible architecture, how Ansible works, the various benefits of Ansible and finally we'll have a demo on the installation of Apache or the HTTPD package on our client systems. We'll also be hosting a very simple web page and during this demo, I'll also show you how you can write a very simple playbook in YAML and your inventory file. So let's begin. Why should you use Ansible? Let's consider a scenario of an organization where Sam is a system administrator. Sam is responsible for the company's infrastructure. A company's infrastructure basically consists of all its systems. This could include your web servers, your database servers, the various repositories and so on. So as a system administrator, Sam needs to ensure that all the systems are running the updated versions of the software. Now when you consider a handful of systems, this seems like a pretty simple task. Sam can simply go from system to system and perform the configurations required. But that is not the case with an organization, is it? An organization has a very large infrastructure. It could have hundreds and thousands of systems. So here is where Sam's work gets really difficult. Not only does it get tougher, Sam has to move from system to system, performing the same task over and over again. This makes Sam bored. Not just that, repeating the same task leaves no space for innovation. And without any ideas or innovation, how does the system grow? And the worst of it all is manual labor is prone to errors. So what does Sam do? Well, here is where Ansible comes in use. With Ansible, Sam can write simple codes that are deployed onto all the systems and configure them to the correct states. So now that we know why we should use Ansible, let's look at what exactly is Ansible. Ansible is an IT engine that automates the following tasks. So first we have orchestration. Orchestration basically means bringing together of multiple applications and ensuring an order in which these are executed. So for example, if you consider a web page that you require to host, this web page stores all its values that it takes from the user into a database. So the first thing you must do is ensure that the system has a database manager and only then do you host your web page. So this kind of an order is very crucial to ensure that things work right. Next, Ansible automates configuration management. So configuration management simply means that all the systems are maintained at a consistent desired state. Other tools that automate configuration management include Puppet and Chef. And finally, Ansible automates deployment. Deployment simply means the deploying of application onto your servers of different environments. So if you have to deploy an application on 10 systems with different environments, you don't have to manually do this anymore because Ansible automates it for you. In fact, Ansible can also ensure that these applications or the code are deployed at a certain time or after regular intervals. Now that we know what exactly Ansible is, let's look at Ansible's architecture. Ansible has two main components. You have the local machine and you have your node or the client machine. So the local machine is where the system administrator sits. He or she installs Ansible here. And on the other end, you have your node or the client systems. So in case of Ansible, there's no supporting software installed here. These are just the systems that require to be configured and they are completely controlled by the local machine. At your local machine, you also have a module. A module is a collection of your configuration files. And in case of Ansible, these configuration files are called playbooks. Playbooks are written in YAML. YAML stands for YAML ain't a markup language. And it is honestly the easiest language to understand and learn since it's so close to English. We also have the inventory. The inventory is a file where you have all your nodes that require configuration mentioned. And based on the kind of configuration they require, they're also grouped together. So later in the demo, we'll have a look at how the playbook and the inventory is written and that will probably make it clearer. So of course, a local machine needs to communicate with the client. And how is this done? This is done through SSH. SSH is your secure shell, which basically provides a protected communication in an unprotected environment. Okay, so we saw the various components of Ansible. Now, how does Ansible exactly work? You have your local machine on one end, 
This is where you install Ansible. If you have gone through any previous material on Ansible, you would have come across the term agentless often being associated with this tool. So this is what agentless means. You're installing Ansible only on your local machine and there's no supporting software or plugin being installed on your clients. This means that you have no agent on the other end. The local machine has complete control and hence the term agentless. Another term that you would come across with Ansible is push configuration. So since the local machine has complete control here, it pushes the playbooks onto the nodes and thus it's called a push configuration tool. Now the playbooks and the inventory are written at the local machine and the local machine connects with the nodes through the SSH client. This step here is optional but it's always recommended to do so. It's where the facts are collected. So facts are basically the current state of the node. Now all this is collected from the node and sent to the local machine. So when the playbook is executed, the task mentioned in the playbook is compared against the current status of the node and only the changes that are required to be made further are made. And once the playbooks are executed, your nodes are configured to the desired states. So as I mentioned before, Ansible is currently the most trending tool in the market under the configuration management umbrella. So let's have a look at the various benefits of Ansible which gives it this position. Well, Ansible is agentless, it's efficient, it's flexible, simple, irimportant, and provides automated reporting. How does it do all this? Let's have a look at that. Agentless, as I already mentioned before, you require no supporting software or plugin installed on your node or the client system. So the master has complete control. And automatically, this means that Ansible is more efficient because now we have more space in our client and node systems for other resources and we can get Ansible up and running real quick. Ansible is also flexible. So an infrastructure is prone to change very often and Ansible takes no amount of time to adjust to these changes. Ansible cannot get any simpler with your playbooks written in a language such as YAML, which is as close to English as you can possibly get. Air important basically means that if you have a playbook which needs to be run n number of systems, it would have the same effect on all of these systems without any side effect. And finally, we have automated reporting. So in case of Ansible, your playbook has a number of tasks and all these tasks are named. So whenever you run or execute your playbook, it gives a report on which tasks ran successfully, which failed, which clients were not reachable and so on. All this information is very crucial when you're dealing with a very large infrastructure. And finally, we reach the most exciting part of our tutorial, the hands-on. Before we move on to the actual hands-on, let me just brief you through what exactly we'll be doing. So I'll be hosting two virtual boxes, both CentOS 7 operating systems. One would be my local machine and other my node or the client machine. So on my local machine, first I'll install Ansible. We then write the inventory and the playbook and then simply deploy this playbook. On the client machine, there's just one thing that we need to do is that we need to check if the configurations that we mentioned in our playbook are made right. So we'll now begin our demo. This is my Oracle virtual box. Here I have my master system, which is the local machine. And this is the client machine. So let's have a look at these two machines. This is my client machine. The terminals open right now. So the client machine terminal has a black background with white text. And the master machine terminal has a white background with black text just so you can differentiate between the two. So we'll start at the master machine. The first thing to do is we need to install our Ansible. So yum install Ansible hyphen Y is the command to do so. So this might take some time. Yeah, so Ansible is installed. The next step, we go to our host file. So our host file here is basically the inventory. It's where you'll specify all your nodes. In our case, we just have one node. That's the path to your host file. As you'll see, everything here is commented. So just type in the group for your client nodes. So I'm going to name it Ansible Clients.
and here we need to type the IP address of a client machine. So my client machine's IP address is 192.168.2.127. So before you come to this, it's advised that you check the IP address on your client machine. The simple command for that is if config. Now once you type the IP address, put a space and here we need to mention the username and the password for our client. So I'll be logging in as the root user. So this is the password. And then the user. Which is root in my case. That's it. Now you can save this file. Just clear the screen. Next, we move on to our playbook. We need to write the playbook. So the extension for our playbook is YML, which stands for YAML. And as you can see here, I have already written my playbook, but I'll just explain to you how this is done. So a YAML file always begins with three dashes. This indicates the start of your YAML file. Now, the first thing is you need to give a name to the entire playbook. So I have named it sample book. Host is basically where this would be executed. So as we saw earlier in our inventory, I mentioned clients group name as Ansible clients. So we use the same name here. The remote user is the user you'll be using at your client. So in my case, that's root and become true is basically to indicate that you need to set your privileges at root. So that's called a privilege escalation. Now a playbook consists of tasks. So we have here three tasks. The first task I've named it to install HTTPD. So what we are doing here is we are installing our HTTPD package, which is basically the Apache server. And we're installing the most latest version of it. Hence the state value is latest. The next task is running HTTPD. So for the service, the name is HTTPD because that's the service we need to start running and the state is started. Our next task is creating content. So this is the part where we are creating our web page. So copy because this is the file that will be created at the client. The content will be welcome. And the destination of the file will be var www .html, index .html. As you know, this is like a default path that we use to store all our HTML files. Now, as you can see here, there's quite a lot of indentation. And when it comes to YAML, although it's very simple to write and very easy to read, the indentation is very crucial. So the first dash here represents the highest stage that is the name of the playbook and all the dashes under task are slightly shifted towards the right. So if you have two dashes at the same location, they basically mean that they are siblings. So the priority would be the same. So to ensure that all your tasks are coming under the tasks label, make sure they are not directly under name. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So when you write your YAML file, the language is pretty simple, very readable, indentations absolutely necessary. Make sure all your spaces are correctly placed. We can now save this file. Next thing we need to check if the syntax of our YAML file is absolutely right because that's very crucial. So the command to check the syntax of the YAML file is Ansible playbook, the name of your playbook, syntax, check. So we have no syntax errors, which is why the only output you receive is sample.yml, which is the name of your playbook. So our playbook is ready to be executed. The command to execute the playbook is Ansible playbook and the name of your playbook. So our playbooks executed, as you can see here, gathering facts, that's where all the facts of the node, that's the present state of the node is collected and sent to the local machine. So it's basically to check that if the configuration changes that we are about to make is already made. So it's not made. We do not have the HTTPD package installed on our node. So this is the first change that's made. 
Also, if it's not installed, of course, it's not running. That's the second change that's made. So it's put into the running state. And a final task, which is create content, is under the OK state. This means that the content's already present in the client machine. So I made it this way so that you can at least see the different states that's present. So over here we have OK4, four, so four things are all fine. The facts are gathered, two things are changed, and one is already present. Two changes are made. Zero clients are unreachable and zero tasks have failed. So this is the documentation that I was referring to previously that Ansible provides automatically and is very useful as you can see. So our next step, we need to just check on our client machine if all the changes that we desired are made. So let's move to our client. So this is my client machine. So to check this, since we are installing the HTTP package and hosting a web page, the best way to do it is open your browser and type in localhost. So there you go, your Apache server is installed and your web page is hosted. So that was very simple, wasn't it? If you have any doubts about the procedure or any other part of the tutorial, please post your doubts in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as we see them. So we have successfully completed our demo. Let's quickly look at everything that you learned today. First, we had a look at why we should use Ansible. What exactly is Ansible? We had a look at Ansible's architecture and how Ansible works. We then saw the various benefits of using Ansible. And finally, we had a demo on installing the Apache server on our client machine and also hosting a very simple web page. So I hope you guys really like this tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. So that's all from my side today. This is Anjali signing off. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.